great honor to be here with y'all. Um, oh, excuse me, I forgot where I'm at. With Yuns? Can I conjugate that right? Okay, very good. Um, all this week, uh, I've had poetry on the brain. And for whatever reason, with our gospel lesson today, uh, I thought of Robert Frost. Right? And I think most of us probably know his most famous poem, or at least the one most apocalyptic, right? Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. What's the rest? This is like a lip test, right? <laughs> Uh-oh, didn't know there was going to be a quiz. Do we know? Fire and ice? Some say the world will end in fire, some say in ice. Of what I tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. But if it should have to perish twice, I think I know enough of hate to know that for destruction, ice is also great and would suffice. Robert Frost was inspired uh, by Canto 32 of Dante's Inferno, where he looks out uh, and sees a layer of hell where uh, those souls who have committed a certain a particular offense are encased in clear ice rather than being boiled in lakes of fire. Do you know what that sin was? Now we're really stretching back. <laughs> right? <laughs> Traitors. Traitors. The ones who are encased in ice. It also uh, came from a conversation that he apparently had with the uh, astronomer, Harlow Shipley. Whenever he asked Shipley, well, how will the world end? And Shipley said, well, it's going to happen one of two ways. Either uh, the sun will ultimately expand to the point that it incinerates the earth, uh, or the sun will collapse in on itself, and then we will, you know, the earth will freeze into a, a, a void. We as human beings, I think, have this morbid curiosity with the end of the world. We're, we have this unique obsession with worrying and wondering exactly how is this going to pan out? How are we going to check out of this place, right? It's a truly morbid <coughs> curiosity. And it's not new. Because Jesus is speaking to that this, uh, this morning in our gospel lesson. And he, in it, they're walking past the temple. Beautiful structure dedicated to God. And the disciples are commenting on it. And then Jesus says, yeah, but it's all going to go away someday. And they're horrified. What's going to happen? And this, this little discourse is called the Little Apocalypse, where Jesus is talking about the end of time and what's going to happen. But what does he say? There's going to be war, there's going to be famine, there's going to be all these distress. But what? We turn on 6 o'clock news, we turn on CNN at any given time, what do we see routinely? Wars, famine, horrible things happening all over the world. The signs of the end times are all around us, but the reality is the signs of these end times have always been around us. <laughs> so I think that there must be something that Jesus is trying to get at here. And as best as I can determine, what Jesus is trying to say is that there will be a day, judgment day, where the world does end. However, there will be a day that will seem like the end of the world to each and every single one of us. Now, I don't know if you've ever experienced that sort of apocalypse for yourself with the loss of a loved one, with uh, perhaps a major health crisis, if you've ever experienced some sort of tragedy, if you've ever gone through a flood or a fire, if you've ever had any of these sorts of things happen, it seems like the end of the world. Your own personal apocalypse, right there. But Jesus says something else. He says something that reminds me so much of one of my favorite books, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Anybody here ever read Douglas Adams? What is on the front cover of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? You remember the book in the book. What's it say on the front cover? In big, bold letters, don't panic. I, I would love to find a Bible. <laughs> I'm not sure what Douglas Adams' estate would think of this, as a matter of fact. Um, if we could get a Bible with big, bold letters on the front cover, really, truly, 
the subtitle to the entire Holy Scriptures. Don't panic. <laughs> it's true. Yes, there may be horrible things that happen in the world. Yes, there may be tragic things that happen to each and every single one of us. Don't panic. Don't panic. God is with us. God really truly is. God loves us and God is not going to abandon us. That's the beauty of Holy Scripture. That's really the most edifying thing you could ever possibly read or understand. God is not going to just ditch us and go when the going gets tough. Now, I've had friends that have done that. I've had friends, I've had family that's done it. God's never left me. God's never stopped loving me. God's never stopped talking to me and telling me that he loves me. God's never stopped talking to you and saying that he doesn't love you, care for you, appreciate you, wants you to be the person that he calls you to be. But you need to be that person. The world needs you to be that person. The kingdom needs you to be that person. Whenever everything in the world seems like chaos, it is in fact the duty and job of a Christian to not panic. It is to be comfortable in chaos. It is in fact the job of, of, of a Christian to live like R.E.M. says. It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel fine. <laughs> We can get through it, my brothers and sisters, because we have Jesus with us, we have God with us, we have the power of the Holy Spirit pushing us towards radical love, towards care and concern for all of those who are different from us, who live in their own little apocalypse. Because if it didn't come for us today, my brothers and sisters, it, it came for somebody. Somebody is hurting in this world. Somebody needs Jesus. Someone needs you to reach out your hands in love and care for to bring them that little hope, that dream of happiness, that reality that God is there for them. I come from southern West Virginia, which 50 <coughs> years ago was filled with bright, gleaming cities, with uh, coal mining in full swing and uh, all of these stores in full operation. Uh, the city of Bluefield itself had um, you know, 17, 18 story buildings. We had um, traffic jams in the middle of Appalachia. <laughs> we had so much. Time goes by. The gleaming cities with towers are no more. That's an era that has gone by. And for many of the people who live there, it seems like the end of the world has come and gone. We've been left behind. When we reach out in love to those people who are, being, who are suffering from the issues of poverty, from addiction, from exploitation, whenever we reach out our hands in love and care and generosity, we touch souls on what may be the worst day of their lives. That's the Christian virtue, my brothers and sisters, of recognizing that God is in control. God is in control when we turn over our lives, turn over our time, turn over our talents, turn over our treasure. Whenever we turn those over to God, we say, I get that I'm not in control, that you are, Lord. Use me for your kingdom. It's the end of the world as we know it, my brothers and sisters, and I feel fine because I know God is with me. God is with each and every single one of us. So at the end of the day, we go back to Robert Frost. If the world ends in fire, or if it ends in ice, it doesn't matter. God is with us each and every step of the way. And for that, I sing hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>